How did Pipistrel make an airplane that can lift full fuel, carry four adults, and still cover a thousand nautical miles? In this piece, I'm going to walk you through the design choices, show the exact mission math, and stack the Panthera against rivals so you can hear why full fuel, a thousand nautical miles, four adults is a big deal. And more importantly, how the Panthera actually gets there. Let's start with the target numbers and why they matter. From Pipistrel's current spec sheet, the economy cruise is about 190 knots true at 12,000 feet on roughly 11.1 .1 gallons per hour at 60% power. Usable fuel capacity is about 89.8 .8 gallons. Maximum takeoff weight is 3,000 pounds. Typical empty weight is around 907 pounds, which leaves a useful load of about 1,093 pounds. The published maximum range with four passengers and an IFR reserve is an even 1,000 nautical miles. What's striking is how these figures line up. Big tanks, high true airspeed per gallon, and a real usable load. Put differently, the airplane isn't gaming the range at 140 to 150 knots. Based on the economy profile and 89.8 .8 gallons usable, a 1,000 nautical mile leg is achievable at 190 knots while holding IFR reserves. Third party reports back this up. Pilots have seen about 193 knots true around 13 gallons per hour and roughly 183 knots true on about 11.5 gallons per hour near 8,500 feet. Numbers that reinforce the brochure's fast on little fuel profile. And AOPA has written about exactly that. Why this is a big deal is simple. In most four-seat singles, you can have speed and range, or you can have four adults, but not all three at once, unless you slow down a lot or stop for fuel. The Panthera's trick is reducing drag so much that 190 knots lives in the low teens gallons per hour, which means those 89.8 gallon tanks can support both speed and distance with passengers aboard. Now let me show the work, the thousand mile mission math so you can hear each step. Take the published economy profile, 190 knots true at roughly 11.1 .1 gallons per hour. Time for 1,000 nautical miles is 1,000 divided by 190, which is about 5.26 hours. Cruise fuel is 5.26 hours times 11.1 .1 gallons per hour, which comes out to around 58.4 gallons. Add an IFR reserve of 45 minutes at roughly 55% maximum continuous power, call that 7 to 8 gallons to be conservative, and your total planned fuel is about 66 gallons on a tidy round number. At 6 pounds per gallon, that's roughly 396 pounds of fuel. Subtract 396 from the useful load of about 1,193 pounds, and you retain roughly 697 pounds for people in bags, which is four 170-pound adults with a few pounds left for light carry-ons, and you're still cruising near 190 knots true. That's the essence of the Panthera proposition, and the math follows directly from the published efficiencies in tankage. Real-world dispatch still depends on winds aloft and climb contingency fuel. So, how does the airframe buy those numbers? First, ruthless drag reduction, the kind you only get when you obsess over shape and finish. Composite shaping in laminar-friendly surfaces, a tight cowl with small inlets feeding a high-efficiency plenum, and obsessive fit and finish all work together to keep parasitic drag way down. Even the landing gear doors are over-engineered on purpose. There are 11 separate doors that close flush, so the belly is clean once the gear is retracted. This is the classic aerodynamic bargain. Spend effort on cutting drag so you can spend less fuel for the same speed, and AOPA's coverage calls this out. Second, efficient lift and landing gear architecture actually matter more than most people think. The retractable titanium trailing link gear keeps the cabin height down, which reduces frontal area and therefore drag, and it keeps gear down drag low. When you retract it, you remove the biggest fixed gear penalty entirely. Pipistrel's brochures highlight this as a key efficiency lever because it truly is. Third, the engine choice is about operating point, not exotic hardware. It's just a 260 horsepower Lycoming IO540, nothing magical. What's special is that the airframe allows high 180s to low 190s knots true at low teens gallons per hour an operating point where a lot of other four-seat singles need more fuel for the same speed, or they have to slow down to hit their range claims. 
AOPA's flight tests showing about 183 knots true at 11.5 gallons per hour corroborate the efficiency in the real world. Fourth, the tanks are sized to fit the mission profile you actually want to fly. Many four-place tours carry 60 to 75 gallons. The Panthera packs roughly 90 gallons usable. Couple that with around 17 nautical miles per gallon at 190 knots, and you get an airplane that can both sustain speed and respect reserves with four aboard instead of forcing you into a fuel stop. Fifth, and this point is critical, the safety architecture is modern. The cabin is engineered like a safety cell, essentially a roll bar structure with energy absorbing zones, and the full airframe ballistic parachute is standard equipment. You are not trading safety away to get the speed and the range, you're getting both. Now let's compare. Who can really do a thousand nautical miles with four adults and reserves, and at what speed and under what conditions? I'm going to keep this grounded at normal cruise, not pull down into long range droning, and I'll call out tankage limits where they matter. Cirrus SR22 and SR22T first. Modern SR22s and SR22Ts have about 92 gallons usable, and Cirrus publishes 169 nautical miles for the SR22 and 1,021 nautical miles for the SR22T at 55% power. That's real, but it implies you are slowed to 55%, which is well below the 180s or 200 knot claims owners like to talk about at higher power. At typical 65 to 75% cruise, Published and field numbers run roughly 171 to 180 knots true, with about 15 to 18 gallons per hour. So to get 1,000 miles, you accept a slower profile than the Panthera's 190 knot economy setting. The takeaway is simple. Cirrus will do 1,000 miles when slowed. Panthera does 1,000 miles at about 190 knots. Cirrus counters with an unmatched ecosystem. Training? Caps, avionics integration, service, which is compelling, but on pure speed per gallon, the Panthera holds an edge. Beechcraft Bonanza G36 next. Fuel is 74 gallons, usable by the factory spec. Typical cruise lives around 163 to 174 knots, true at roughly 13 to 16 gallons per hour. With smaller tanks than the Panthera, a non-stop thousand with four plus reserve usually means pulling way back into slower cruise or stopping once. It's still a superb hauler and an all-time classic. But tankage is the limiter if you want higher cruise speeds and that long leg four up. Diamond DA50RG, the stylish Jet A sipper. Fuel is roughly 49 gallons usable per the factory spec. Published max range is around 750 nautical miles at economy settings, with consumption on the order of 9 to 11 gallons per hour at max range power. In exchange, you get a modern diesel that sips jet fuel, but a thousand mile nonstop with four aboard isn't the standard profile unless auxiliary tankage appears. Vans RV10, the kit plane with many engine options. Typical fuel is roughly 60 gallons usable. Real world economy, documented by AOPA, shows about 165 knots true at around 9.2 gallons per hour at 65%, which is around 18 nautical miles per gallon, even better than the Panthera's nautical miles per gallon, but slower. With reserves, you're on the edge of a thousand mile leg four up. Many owners plan a stop. Socata TB20 Trinidad, a legacy benchmark with big legs. Fuel is 86.2 gallons usable, 88.8 .8 total, and cruise sits around 160 to 163 knots on about 14 to 16 gallons per hour. Tankage is generous, but true airspeed per gallon is lower, so a thousand miles four up is often a long range, slower affair. The Panthera achieves more speed on less fuel. Cessna 182T, the modern fixed gear workhorse. Fuel is about 87 gallons usable. Economy settings yield about 145 knots, true with published ranges in the 915 to 971 nautical mile band depending on model and power. Utility is tremendous, but fixed gear drag keeps true airspeed down. To fly a thousand miles, you're either in long range settings or you stop when you're four up. The pattern should be clear by now. Most four-play singles either run out of fuel volume at real cruise, must slow down to economy power to reach a thousand miles, or sacrifice payload to carry enough fuel. The Panthera's combination. 
roughly 90 gallon tanks, plus roughly 190 knots true on roughly 11 gallons per hour, plus roughly 1,190 pounds of useful load, sidesteps that three-way trap. Now for the hard truth section. Caveats and operational realities you need to plan around. Speed control on descent takes intention because the airplane is so clean it builds speed quickly. AOPA noted you can run into the yellow arc if you're not thinking ahead. The flip side is that those multiple gear doors act like speed brakes, but VLE and VFE are modest. Think 106 knots indicated, so you plan energy early and you fly the pattern like it's a fast airplane. Spec evolution also matters, as I said. Early U.S. demo birds showed smaller usable fuel until the long-range tanks rolled in. That's why older articles cite around 55 gallons. The current data sheet's roughly 89.8 gallon figure is what underpins the 1,000 nautical miles with four claim, so always check the specific airframe's equipment. And on certification status, as of early 2025 reporting, EASA type certification had slipped past the previously targeted 2024 window. Work continued with four credit flight tests. US FAA validation would follow EASA. If you need a type certified Panthera today, you're watching the scoreboard rather than flying one. Experimental exhibition examples are operating in the interim, and you should treat that as a practical constraint. A simple lens that helps compare airplanes is knots per gallon or nautical miles per gallon at a given cruise. Here are the anchor numbers. The Panthera at economy. 190 knots true divided by 11.1 .1 gallons per hour equals roughly 17.1 nautical miles per gallon. A Cirrus SR-22, take a G2 example at 65%, does about 171 knots true on 15.4 gallons per hour, which is roughly 11.1 .1 nautical miles per gallon. A Bonanza G36 at the factory normal setting at 10,000 feet shows about 163 knots true on 13.3 gallons per hour, which is around 12.3 nautical miles per gallon. An RV-10 in AOPA's demo at 65% shows about 165 knots true on 9.2 gallons per hour, which is about 17.9 nautical miles per gallon. Very efficient, but with 60-gallon tanks. Two takeaways jump out. First, drag reduction is king. You don't need exotic power plants if the airframe is clean enough to cruise fast on small fuel flows. Second, tank size matters. The RV-10's efficiency is stellar. But with about 60 gallons on board, you're right on the edge of a 1,000-mile leg with reserves, and you'll be flying roughly 25 knots slower than a Panthera doing the same distance. So why is the Panthera's specific full fuel plus 1,000 nautical miles plus four adults claim credible? Five reasons. One, the tanks are big enough. Roughly 90 gallons usable gives you the fuel mass to maintain roughly 190 knots, and still hold IFR reserves without pushing payload off the airplane. Two, the true airspeed per gallon is high enough. Low teens gallons per hour at high 180s or 190 knots is a different operating point than most singles, which need mid-teens to hold those speeds. AOPA's numbers agree. Three, the useful load supports real people. About 1,093 pounds useful minus roughly 396 pounds of trip plus reserve fuel leaves around 697 pounds for people in bags. That's four adults at the FAA standard 170 pounds or three heavier adults plus one lighter adult plus bags. And the math still stands. Now, what about the competition case some owners will make in hangar talk? You might hear, my SR-22 does 1,000 miles too. That's correct, at 55% per Cirrus' own specs. That typically means slower crews than the Panthera's 190 knot economy number, and the SR-22 burns more fuel at equal true airspeed above the mid-160s. Of course, the Cirrus counters with an unmatched ecosystem of training and support, which for many buyers outweighs raw efficiency. Another line is, a Bonanza carries more. With similar useful loads, the G36's 74 gallon standard capped the distance at higher cruise power, so a thousand nautical miles usually means economy settings or a stop. If you value six seats and legacy support, the Bonanza's virtues are clear, but the payload range speed triangle favors the Panthera for a four up, non stop, fast mission. A third line the DA50 burns Jet A and is classy, true 
and its nautical miles per gallon can be superb, but with about 49 gallons usable and a roughly 750 nautical mile max range spec, it's a one-stop airplane for a 1,000-mile day with passengers. And finally, an RV-10 goes nearly as far on less fuel. Also true at about 165 knots, and the RV-10 is terrific value. But the tanks are roughly 60 gallons, and it's a kit, which means variability in build, weight, and finish. If your mission is 1,000 nautical miles nonstop at near 200 knots with a factory safety cell and parachute, the Panthera is pointed squarely at that niche. Here's the meta story that ties this all together. Pipistrelle's brand thesis, born from clean sheet composites and efficiency contests, is to remove drag first and then right size the power. Do that and you get speed at economy fuel flows. Do that with big usable tanks and you turn efficiency into real world range with people aboard. Add the ballistic parachute and the safety cell cabin and you normalize modern risk management at Panthera speeds. The roadmap matters too. With Textron eAviation's backing and public talk of hybrid and electric variants, the airframe sits where general aviation is likely headed. Fast and frugal, with room for different power plants over time. The certification timeline has slipped, yes, but the program appears to be moving through EASA for credit work rather than stalling. If you want one clean line you can say on camera or on stage, use this. Panthera doesn't beat physics, it removes drag. That's why it can take four real adults and still cover a thousand nautical miles at about 190 knots on low teens gallons per hour, something rivals usually have to slow down for or stop for fuel to achieve.